says we're live. It says we're live. It does say we are live. We are really here. I'm wondering if it's if it's going to show up on my. We'll see. We'll see when it shows. It's been up. a while since we've been on Streamyard live. It has. Does my phone even know where to go? Let's see. Mark. It should just be on the regular whistle kick Facebook page. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get there. It says live there. Let's see. Oh, look. Hey, there we are. Hey, we're, there we are. Now, what happened to? Will it be an infinite loop? It, like, it oh, will, like, you're going to break the world. Oh, look. There we are right there. But we're also right here. And I like how it doesn't show that anybody's watching, even though you're clearly watching. Oh, yeah. But online, the program one watching. watching. Oh, there we oh, go. There, right. Right. there was just a delay. All right. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is a special live episode of Martial Arts Radio. As you can see, Andrew and I are not anywhere that we generally record, as no. evidenced by this lovely, obviously, hotel wall, because we are in Keene, New Hampshire for Marshall Summit. Day one has concluded. It was a great time. It hasn't, you know that it hasn't concluded. We're doing it right now. Okay. The day other than this has concluded. Okay. And fine. you know this if you were here. If you were not here, then you don't know this, and you just have to go on the fact that I don't lie to people. So... It happened, and it's true. So you should have been here, and you weren't, and hopefully you will be here tomorrow. And if you're not going to be here tomorrow, hopefully you're going to be here Saturday. If you're not going to be here Saturday, then you better be here Sunday. If you're not going to be here Sunday, I don't know what's going on in your world, but um, you better be here next year. I agree. <laughs> I mean, for sure. Like, I mean, how much more notice do we have to give you? Then? Give you like 11 months notice. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't work it into my schedule, Jeremy. Well, you know, um, I question your scheduling abilities. Yeah. Uh, so we do have a couple of people watching right now, which is cool. Hello. Uh, some of them are even in the room. Some of them are in the room because we are live. We do have is this. Is this the first time we've had a lot? No, it's not the first. We've one. done first couple. We've done first cup live, and mm -hmm. you've done an episode with an audience, but it wasn't live at Mark. Correct. So this is our first live whistle kick martial arts radio with an audience. Yeah. We're, we're moving up. Moving on up. Nope. Moving on up. Do the east side. To a deluxe apartment in the, in the sky. sky. All right. So um, we had a plan. We do have a plan. Uh, it is not just us making jokes. No, that that would be a very short episode. At least a no, poorly... no, it wouldn't because Jenny's not here yet. <laughs> Jenny is. Jenny's small. She's small. So here's what we thought we would do. We are at Marshall Summit. Marshall Summit grew out of Free Training Day, and one of the things that we have not done publicly at length is really talked about the history and the evolution of free training day and the fact that, you know, while this is the seventh, Be careful, touch that table. thank you. Yeah. This is the seventh occurrence of free training day in the Northeast. It's the 11th occurrence of a free training day. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. have had four spanning three other locations and it's a great format and it really lines up with the whistle kick ethos. And so we'll, we'll talk about that. And then of course, if anyone in the room has, Questions. mildly pertinent questions Just or those of you out there in Facebook land have mildly pertinent questions, you are welcome to chime in and ask them. Andrew is watching yep. the Tom, chat. Tommy and Stacy are both watching right now. Hello, Hello Tommy. Tommy. Hello, Hello Stacy. We'll see both of them very soon. Yep. Excited about that. Tomorrow, I think. Uh, yeah, we will see them both tomorrow. They're both, are they both presenting? They are both uh, no, Stacy, Stacy, Stacy's taking present. this year off. That's she, right. Stacy presented last she year. She killed it last year. She killed it, yeah. Um, but no, t but Tommy will be presenting on, on Saturday. All right, so we're... I, I kind of want to let you drive. Yeah. This is one of those examples where I've been in it yep. for yep. a while, and I don't always have a, a good ability to step outside and know what and to this, talk about. This idea for an episode came from my wife, Teresa. She said... She has a lot of great episodes. She, a lot of great ideas, ideas for episodes. She does. She does. She does. And she Shout said, why don't, why don't you talk about where it came from and how it e has evolved mm. from what it was to what it is. Sure. And so let's talk about year one. Uh, it was seven years ago. It was. 2016. Yeah. In 2016, I tried to pull off an event that was a that mimicked an event I had been to. Did things was going to do things a little bit differently, but bottom line, it was a pay for event. 
and it didn't happen. I needed something, I needed very few people to sign up to break even. I needed like 20 people. And I was like, 20 people, not a problem. Because we just hosted a tournament that had close to 200 people. And for an inaugural year tournament in Vermont, uh, that's kind of a big deal. So I, I was like, oh, we got this. I had two people sign up. Like, that is that's a lot less the economics 20. of that do not work <laughs> yikes and i thought about canceling it i hate canceling things i said okay what what could i do the room is already the, the venue is already covered I, I can't back out of that i just want people to get together and train yeah hey all of these people that were going to teach sessions we now use the verb present well, what, what do you think would you uh you want to do this i'm not going to pay you or give you a room or feed you you're going to show up of your own accord and teach and maybe you want to take the other sessions from other people and they're like yeah everyone said yes you didn't have one person say not no. one person wow. said no and it was a great day mm. it was small 26 people maybe 28 people mm -hmm. Some of those people that were there year one, I've never seen again. Some of the people that showed up year one are the reason that we have the, if you teach your session and leave, you don't get to teach again mm -hmm. rule. But most of the people that were there got it. And a lot of the stuff that happens now, I didn't even realize what we had stumbled on in that first year. And the biggest piece is, is by removing money entirely, we removed ego. The no. only people who showed up and the only people who continue to show up are people who love to train. Yeah, yeah. Um, I obviously wasn't at that first year. Um, two people that uh, we certainly would consider Whistlekick family uh, were also, they're sad, they're it's the only one they weren't at. Both Stacy and Tommy mm. were not at that first one and they both, uh, Tommy put a little, a little, uh, uh, oh, I thought he put a crying face, but no, he put a laughing face. The only one I wasn't there. So maybe he's not sad. He wasn't there, <laughs> but, uh, Stacy said, uh, she wasn't there either. So, and I wasn't there. I'm sad. I'm yeah. Too. Uh, there are, there's, there's very little, there are very few people who were at that, that have been to other ones. And what's interesting is one of the people who was there was Jared Wilson. Mm. So many of you know Jared Wilson. He's been on the show like 500 times. I think second only to Craig and maybe, maybe you. Maybe. He's been on a number of times. <laughs> there's, a, there's a delay. Yeah, if you, wa if you watch on your phone over there, it takes a surprising amount of time for my voice. Oh, Jenny Nather's now watching. It showed up, Jenny oh Nathan. God. Jenny, thanks for watching. Thank thanks, you. Jenny. <laughs> Jared drove up from Tennessee to do this, even though I wasn't even giving him gas. Yeah, yeah. Jared also presented at Free Training Day South. Mm, he yep. drove to which he drove we'll, to Atlanta. Which we'll that. get there. In yeah. A bit. So that was the first year. You had this idea for a weekend paid event. Yep. People didn't sign up for you. Pivoted. Nope. Yep. You had this one day of training, which cost nothing. Hence, you named it Free Training Day. We say all the time we're it, not great it, at naming it wasn't, things. It wasn't even the name then. I oh, didn't it wasn't even, even know Free Training. Day. Free Training. It wasn't even called Free Training Day until like the third or fourth year. Oh, interesting. Okay. I don't even think it was the name for the second year. I'd have to go back and look at the look at the posters. Um, who's on? Alexander's watching. Hey, what's going uh, on? He, he was here a couple he, hours ago. He, he gave a great session he earlier gave a session today. today, which was great. Um, those first few years, like I, I know somewhat the later history, yeah. but those first few years, 2016, 17, 18, 19, yeah. what, what changed was, did anything change in those first few years or was it status quo? It was, it was pretty similar. The big change was from year one to two, three, we had a new venue mm -hmm. because the, the deal we had, for year one was because I had paid a lot of money to have a tournament at this place. And they threw that in without that oh. tournament. It was completely unaffordable. Gotcha. So uh, a friend of the show, Susanna was teaching at a local school mm -hmm. and she was like, yeah, I can get you the gym for the day. 
great. Like we had to cover the custodian, I think, right? You know, this is one of the difficulties of running a free event. The economics yeah. mean you have to make some really interesting decisions. So year two, year three, we did that. She moved to a different school. Year four, we were at a different school. Mm. And so that's through 19. And then 2020, yeah. nobody did anything. So 2019 was my first introduction to free training day. Yeah. Uh, I had, I can't remember. I, I should have gone through and looked at the timeline. I can't remember if I had already been on the show, but we had met already in person. I think I had come on the I show. I think you had been on the show. Because I knew Leslie, but I had never met Leslie. Um, so I met Leslie for the first time. Uh, frequent listeners of the show will know that she was the producer before I came on board. Uh, and so that was where I first met Leslie. I first met Stacy at that event as well. Um, Tommy was there, but I don't, I didn't, I didn't meet him to have made a connection yeah. that I remember. Uh, but that was the first year that I got involved and I was blown away. I'd never been to an event like that before. Uh, and the social aspect was huge. Like it was, it, it was more than just training and it was, it, it was immediately evident. I think the best anecdote and, and Stacy's reminding me, you know, I want to make sure we acknowledge this. So Saturday is never settle awards in the banquet and we're awarding the recipients of the never settle awards. And Hughes and Alexander, his company twin state awards has sponsored the awards. So thank you. Um, yeah, he does a great job. If, if you're anywhere even remotely near our area, plaques, trophies, if you're doing it, medals, if you're doing anything for your tournaments, please talk to him, Twin State Awards. And if you need connection, like I'll, I'll put you in touch. The best anecdote for the difference for free training day, and this was something, again, that I, I sort of modeled on this other event that I had been to in upstate New York, was this idea that if you go to most events, you watch through the day and attendance drops off, mm. right? Being put in the last session is almost an insult because yep, yep. you know far fewer people will be there. They want to get out of there. They want to go home. That does not happen at free training day. In fact, we found from the beginning, I was throwing people out. I was like, you, you have to go. <laughs> we have to clean up. Yeah. And you articulated the social aspect. That wasn't something that I was used to seeing. It wasn't something that we had talked about having to accommodate. Mm -hmm. And it became an unintentional hallmark of that event. Yeah. And now, you know, we know how to talk about it. We know how to backfill the explanation. It's around the removal of ego and making sure that the right people are there. You get the right people in the room. Really cool things happen. But that was something we stumbled on. I hadn't planned on building an event that would be fun and lots of great training and everyone would become friends. Yeah. That wasn't designed. Yeah. So 2020 didn't happen for obvious reasons. Did not happen. Let's talk about 2021 because a, a very pivotal change happened in 2021. And, and 2021 exemplifies something that we've talked about. I call it free training day magic. Somehow things just seem to work out with this event. And it was really easy to say and do that in the early years because what did I have to do? I needed presenters. And I needed a schedule mm -hmm. and people would show up and I put the schedule on the wall and it was two halves of a gym. Be like, do this thing or do this thing. And that's it. Yep. And people would say, oh, it's so much work. I was like, no, not really. <laughs> no. Nope. Hey, you want to you wanna do a session at this thing? Sure. We'll, we'll just show up and uh, have fun. Okay, cool. Yep. But in 2021, we got the gym for the second time at the second school that Susanna was able to get us and we had paperwork signed and three weeks before the event, the school said, oh yeah, no, it's too risky to our students. It's like, how, how, how is this risky? Your students aren't going to be there. We will, I, I mean, I'll, what, what do I have to do to sanitize the place when we're done? There's no risk to your students. Sorry, it's out of our hands. We were stuck. And so three weeks out, the venue was pulled out from under us. And that year was, uh, we had some pretty, uh, pretty, I don't want to say big names in terms of like people coming, like necessarily, but people, it was the first year that we had people 
flying in. Yeah. Gabe and Jenny were flying in from Seattle area uh, or Portland, Portland. area. Um, Andy, uh, uh, b -b -b Justin. Justin was flying up from Atlanta. Andy Rodriguez was driving up from Maryland. Uh, and we had people coming up from Virginia. And all of these people had Airbnbs already booked yeah, near the school, which now we we don't have a venue. We can't hold the event there anymore. Right. Um, right. And they've already got plane tickets. Like we can't cancel. But we also you spent a week trying to find a place yeah. close to where the original school was. And this was this was pivotal in a lot of ways because you know you and I were talking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you said, "Hey." I've got an idea. It was a Thursday. I can tell you very specifically. It was a Thursday night. Abby and I uh, were at our karate school taking class. And I mentioned to Abby, so yeah, free training day is supposed to happen in you know two and a half weeks. Uh, but it's it might not happen. And she's like, what's going on? And I explained. I mean, this school said we can't use the facility anymore. Abby teaches at a Catholic school here in town where my daughter goes to school. And she said, well... Why doesn't you can move it down here to Keene? We can put have it at St. Joe's. She said, Mr. Smith, who is phenomenal, he would let you do it there. And I said, Oh. And that night I got out of class. It was like eight o'clock at night. I texted you and I said, Is Keene too far for free training day? And your response, do you remember what your response was? I don't. You said, Yes, it's too far. And I said, Okay, that's that. Too far. All right. And then the next morning, Friday morning. I'm driving to do an NHTI class, and you send me a message. Maybe it's not too far. What do you have in mind? And we talked on the phone, and I said, look, I have a space that I'm fairly certain would be given to us for free that we can use and have this event happen. And Keen has a lot of stuff going for it, and I kind of – I had to sh I had to like massage you a little bit on the idea because you were really focused on this is a this happens in Vermont near my house and there was a very there was a very simple plan that logistically made my life very easy and we pulled it off for years and by we I mean me it was just me pulling this off at that point not not to to discredit the presenters and what mm -hmm. they'd put in but it was a simple event and I liked it being a simple event yeah because so much of what was going, what I historically do is complex. Mm -hmm. And I liked that I found something simple that I liked and yeah. it worked. But I was backed into this corner. I was uncomfortable. Yeah. And I was like, man, if the options are drive to Keene or not have it, okay, drive to Keene. At least it's an option. And then something started to happen. And it's probably what happened overnight. I realized that there were very, very few people for whom Keen was a further drive. Mm -hmm. I was on that list, but nearly everyone else, it was closer. Yeah. And I went, oh. So you okay. so we you sent me a message and said, see if you can see what you can come up with. And so I emailed Mr. Smith at the school. And like I mentioned, my, my daughter goes there, so I know Mr. Smith really well. And I said, look, here's the deal. We had this event planned. It was going to be in central Vermont. They they pulled the rug out from underneath us. We're looking to host this martial arts event. And he said, sure, absolutely. His sure, absolutely, no problem. It was a very short email. No it, it, problem. It was it was too easy. It felt too easy. And so I I, uh, I sent him an email back and I said, you know, if it's okay, I'd like to come in and just chat with you about it. And he's oh, like, yeah. sure, whatever, come on in. And so I sat down with Mr. Smith and he said, uh, Andrew, it's very simple. You and your wife are, are, are you know, strong supporters of the school. Uh, you know, you host fundraising events for us. Um, you tell me they're all going to be martial artists that are going to be in the building. And I said, yeah. He said, so you're all going to be respectful. Great. No problem. You can use the building free of charge. Now, if you've been to the school, you know that it's a decent sized building. There's, you know, there, there's still heat, there's still electricity, all that stuff. They're still paying, the, which, and let's, we'll be complete. I have no problem being completely honest. They allow us to have the building for free, but we we give them some money. We yep. do pay for the space. Because it, it wouldn't feel right. Otherwise. Yeah. And it was. It, I, I think I started to bring it up to you and you were like, this is not an issue. Like yeah. we are going to pay for the use of the space, yeah. even though he doesn't require it. But um, 
that's how we initially moved the event here to Keene. And, and when we saw what was able to happen because of the, you know, if you if you've been to the area I live in, there's not a lot going on, you know. Oh, let's all go out for a drink. Oh, let's go out for a meal. That's not an option. <laughs> to the one place. <laughs> not even really the one place, right? It's just kind of, all right, I guess we're done. And we came down here and it was like, oh. There's stuff here. There's options. Yeah. Did we do the meet and greet the first year? So the very first year, uh, actually, before we get into that, um, uh, I just happened to notice that uh, I've got my phone here. I'm watching what's sure. going on. Uh, but it didn't show up here, but Kelly and Andy are now watching because they're over there. Hi, Kelly and Andy. Hi. <laughs> uh, Kelly, that, Kelly was at year one. Kelly was at year one, yeah. So the, we didn't do the meet and greet officially. What okay. ended up happening is uh, Gabe and Jenny had come into town a little bit early from Portland. Gabe and Jenny see you. They, yep. Gabe uh, produced Whistle Cake Live for 18 months. Yep. Jenny's been on the show a few times. Abby, who is watching, we already talked about you, Abby. Sorry, we're done. Just kidding. We love you. Um, <laughs> she, uh, we, we had this impromptu, like, hey, a bunch of us are in town. Andy had, had driven up with his wife from Maryland. Yep. They were in town. Gabe and Jenny were here from, from Portland. Let's just get together at 21. This is local mm -hmm. local food and uh, drink establishment. Probably, I think we put it out on the Facebook event. Like, yeah, like, hey, around. if you're in town, and I think yeah. there were like eight. Liz was there. That was the first time I met Liz. Um, Dennis. Dennis showed up Dennis as the first time I met first time I met Dennis. I mistook him for you at first from a distance. <laughs> it was a bald head. Um, but we, it was like maybe eight of us, eight or nine of us, yeah. not very many. So it wasn't official, but it prompted this idea for 2022 last year. Like, let's let's see if we can actually make a, an official thing. And so 2021 was a hit. We had more options. We went to, because we were... That was, we were going to do three tracks. 2021 was going to be the first year of three options instead of two. Yep. The first three years, it was, okay, that side of the gym and that side of the gym. Yeah. And one of the things I realized was, okay, we're starting to get more popularity. More people want to present. How do we accommodate that? How do we dilute the number of people per room by having more rooms? And the school we were going to use, oh, yeah, there's a classroom right nearby. We'll be able to do you know here and then here so we can have a third option. No, it was Jim and then the two campuses. I'm talking about oh, oh I'm talking oh, about the, the place we didn't get to use. In Vermont, yeah, yeah. And we were able to just repeat that with the facility here in Keene. And it went beautifully. It was like, okay, there's some good stuff here. And that's when we started to work together formally on this. Mm -hmm. And because prior to that, it was I was the I was the producer for the show and co-host with you, and I had nothing to do with free training day for 2021 until two weeks before yeah. and i said i can get you when you space. saved it it wasn't just me abby did it too when you and abby saved it <laughs> um but prior to that i had nothing to do with helping run the event it was literally just i was excited to show up and be a participant and yeah. attendee. yeah so 2021 ends and you know i don't remember the details but i remember we talked and we yeah. talked about what we would do next year and how do we move this forward and we did a lot of things. We did. And and I think it, it a lot of the decisions we made for last year, and we'll talk about this year coming up, but uh, for last year was based around, and, you know, we we here at Wizard don't often talk about money, and we're not going to get into specifics, but let's face it, free training day from 2016 until 2019 and 2021 lost money. Yep. It, it, it cost you, it cost Whistlecake money to host this event. And it was important for Whistlecake to do that because it hits all of the ethos that Whistlecake stands for, connecting, educating, and entertaining yep. traditional martial arts of the world. So you didn't mind spending that money to have it happen. It wasn't a lot of money, but you know we do a lot of things that don't cost a lot of yeah. money. And so when we moved to Keene after 2021, we sat down and said, it really, this event is great, and it went really, really well. But it really sucks to lose money. Can we make it like we're not looking to make, you know, twenty five thousand dollars? But it'd be nice to like. I wouldn't uh, mind. No, I mean, it would be nice. But it, it, but our it, initial goal was: can we break even? Can we, we just not even. lose money this year? Yeah. 
And so we did a few things. That's when we did the the VIP bags. Yep. And you know, people bought those, and we sold some stuff, and the we worked out a relationship with a hotel where you know when people reserve rooms, it covers some of our rooms. And and we it was the first year we did four classes. And we did four. And the the test was because really all we had left in the facility was classrooms, actual classrooms. And I said, well, what if you know, one of the things Whistlekick does is we have this, uh, we've built this audience that enjoys conversation and discussion and lecture around martial arts subjects. What if we had classroom sessions? Yeah. We had no idea if they would work well. Yeah. And they did. Mm -hmm. Worked really well. It's like, okay, people are ready for this. And because of the success of 2022 and us throwing a lot of things against the wall and seeing that a lot of it stuck, it became, okay, now where? Now where do we go? Yeah. And, you know, we've talked about this internally as a team. I have a rule. You don't change anything by more than 15% at a time. And we have thrown that rule out the window because <laughs> uh, we had to, because there was no way to, to take a small step yeah. at this point. Yeah, so that was, you know, last year. And we we expanded the event a little bit. So free training day was still Saturday. We had the meet and greet on on Friday night because a lot of people were in town. They were in there in the area. And then you also did uh, a Maddox session on Sunday, which yep. really wasn't part of free training day. It's it was a separate event. Yeah, we just, just happened to be in the same. Building. People are going to be here. Let's yeah. let's give it a shot. You know, Craig and I said this is a good time to roll out the debut. Yep. Yep. Of Maddox level one and. You know, it was kind of independent events promoted, right? Uh, the Never yeah. Settle Awards were promoted. Mm -hmm. uh, the Never Settle Awards banquet, you know, kind of in the same general area. Let's, you know, we've got some things happening. And we sort of turned it into a weekend of, of individual pieces. Yeah, yeah. And then we get done last year's event and we say, okay, what what's going to be next year? Like 2023 and... Where are we going to go? What are we going to add? Can we add? Are there things we can add on to it? Um, and, you know, one of the first things we talked about was we let's expand the number of classes because we want more people to be involved. Mm -hmm. And we, last year we had about 165 people attend on Saturday and we had four classrooms. If we want to have more people in the building, that means of those four classes, there's going to be more people in each one. Yeah. which is going to start to become too many people. How can we dilute those classes being we need, smaller? We need more classes. We need more classes. And so that's where we came up with six classes. Well, the plan was to go to five. The plan was And then when right. we put out the call for presenters, we had so many, we had so many people reach out. Yeah. And it was, okay, we could turn some of these people away, but what if we didn't? Yeah. And you and I had a number of conversations about that. What if we didn't turn these people away? Yeah. How's that? Can work? we make this work? And we found a way to make it work. And and Craig brought up a great point sitting over there that uh, just kind of an interesting thing that there are some people presenting tomorrow that took Saturday. them. I'm sorry. I keep you thinking keep thinking it's Friday. Friday. No, it's I'm so excited. I want tomorrow to be Saturday. Uh, there are people presenting on Saturday that took that Matic Level 1 course for the first time. In fact, 15 of the people, uh, roughly a third of the people presenting, have been through at, at least Matic Level 1. Which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm, re I'm, I'm Even though I have nothing to do with Matic, I'm proud of that. That's really cool. That's a pretty cool thing. So that was the first thing we changed. I'm like, let's add you know, more sessions. We're going to go from four to six sessions um, each time slot. Uh, and then we started looking at growing the stuff we're doing in town. That was the next step. We're talking about getting more food trucks there. This year we've got two. I tried for three. I couldn't manage it. Next year we're just going to have a food truck festival. Yeah, like no joke. I'm just going to advertise to the food trucks. We're also hosting a food truck festival. We we're just It just happens to be right next door to where we're having the sports arts event. Yeah. Um, but, you know, then we said, well, can we grow? If people are already going to be here on Friday evening for the meet and greet, can we can we do stuff Friday during the day? And that was kind of where we first looked at expanding. What what talk about that a little bit? I lost my train of thought. Can you say that again? Sure. 
I'm really tired. It's been a long day. It's been a very long day. So we went from free training day being Saturday, a yeah. little bit on yeah. Friday night, Sunday kind of, and now it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sure. And, and because, again, naming things, free training day and it's three days, okay, that didn't quite work. So what do we call it? And, you know, we bounced ideas around, uh, I think it was January. And so that's when it became Marshall Summit. We came up with an umbrella concept that we can throw a lot of things under. And we have if you add it all up uh, across the four days, something like 60, it's like 65 or 70 different things that you can do. It's a ton of different sessions, a ton yeah. of different classes. Yeah. It's absolutely ridiculous. And almost all of it's free. And it's been really interesting to watch that concept roll out and get to a point where, you know, we, we, we talked about this when we, we, the two of us, one of the things I've enjoyed from year one is when we put out the schedule, people coming to me saying, but, but you've put <laughs> these two that I really want to do opposite each other. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But one of the most enjoyable things is that there's too much for you to do that you cannot consume at all. And we have taken that concept and kind of run with it. There are things happening in multiple locations, like yeah. different buildings at the same time yeah. as part of Marshall Summit. And I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not embarrassed to say it. The goal is that in next year, maybe the year after, for the day, Keen will rename itself Whistlekick New Hampshire. Yep. <laughs> you guys laugh, but we are actually, we it's, actually already talked. We to, have people. We, we have, have someone that works in for places. The, who works for the city. He's been on the show. He's he's been a guest on the show. Uh, who works for the city. We're going to, we're trying to el elicit his help to, uh, to everybody help. in the audience looked at crap. <laughs> no, it's not crap. It's not crap. Um, <laughs> so where do we, where do we go from here? Like outside of naming the town whistle kick New Hampshire for the, for the weekend. My, my goal. So if, you know, you mentioned it towards the top that the the mission of Whistlekick is to connect, educate, and entertain. But the the broader goal is to get everyone in the world to train for six months. So as this builds notoriety, as we have more gravity, I would love to see some things happen next year for people who've never trained. You know, oh, one of the things that happened this year, you went to the various martial arts schools with a number of them in Keene. I know you approached all of them. I, I don't know. I don't know that we have all of them on board, but a number of different martial arts schools within the city said, yeah, if you're around, if you want to come take one of our classes, just tell tell us you're with Whistlekick, you can pop in for free. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That, do, that sort of thing doesn't happen, right? We're breaking down these barriers. So if we can bring in food trucks and say, you know, intro to BJJ and intro to karate and intro to Taekwondo and intro to kickboxing and have all these things for people in the area to say, I've always wanted to do martial arts. Yep, yep. Well, now we're reaching beyond our core audience and we're serving our mission. You know, are we going to be, able, would we have been able to pull that off year one, two, five? No, but now there are enough people, there's enough weight and we've proven our concept. We've shown our yep. colors, so to speak. People trust us yep, and yep. they know that we're out here doing things for the right reasons. So how do we, provide mutual value to martial artists, to the schools, to the food trucks, to the city, yeah. to the residents. So that everyone, whether they train or don't train, whether they own a business or not say, man, this is the best event of the year. Yeah. yeah. Now something we glazed over a little bit, but I do want to sp spend even if, even if just a little bit to talk about, uh, free training day happened 2016, 17, 18, 19, 2021. It happened here. 2022, we held free training day Northeast here mm -hmm. in Keene. We also had free training day South, South, which was in Atlanta, Georgia last year. Mm -hmm. And we also had free training day Pacific Northwest, which was in the Portland area mm -hmm. uh, uh, and the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. um, so we had three last year. Yeah. Um, some three in like four weeks. Five weeks. Yeah, they were stacked on top of each other. And um, I was not able to go to the Atlanta event, yep. uh, but 
you know, you were there. I and, did. And then you and I both flew yeah. to the Portland event, the Pacific Northwest event. Uh, and then this year, the Pacific Northwest event happened again, moved to Seattle, a little bit further north, but uh, happened in Seattle. Uh, and then Atlanta didn't happen, but was picked up by Jenny Nather and ran one in the mid-Atlantic area. So can they He's in the room, if you can't tell. And she just gave a nice big bow. It was lovely. It was more of a small bow. You're right. It was a small She's bow. She's very small. <laughs> um, but, you know, we as a company, Whistlekick, we had this event and it started to grow. Um, this year we had three. Last year we had three. Next year, do we have any? Do we want to talk about plans for next year? Well, there's, there's nothing official, but, you know, um, I'm expecting four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not staring at you. Um, this event is fun. Yep. This event connects people together. Yep. This event is educational. Yep. I can't think of any better model. It is the simplest distillation of everything that I believe matters in martial arts. And I, I think long term when when you know people talk about the early days of Whistlekick, when they talk about the successful elements of Whistlekick, it will come down to two things. It will be this podcast and it will also be free training day. Mm -hmm. The podcast, because it gave us the reach to be able to invite the people to come to free training days mm -hmm. and free training days because it solidified relationships. You know, you and I were talking about someone, I'm not, not going to put them on blast and name names, but we were talking about someone who has been on the show, who I have seen at other events, who I, I wouldn't even say I was friends with, but at one of the other free training days this year, I got to spend some time with this person. We're I friends know. now. I know who you're talking about. And yeah, yeah. It, it is amazing what can happen when you share space, when you share knowledge with people in a at least reduced, if not ego less, I mean, ego less might be a little bit of a pipe dream, but dramatically reduced in terms of ego environment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you've been to a free training day, you understand. If you haven't, you think you understand. You do not. No. You, because you, every you, year until people come it. up to me and they tell me at the end, I thought I knew what I was getting into. It is not that. It is different. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. I can't believe I have to wait a year. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, I'm curious if anyone out watching uh, us live has any questions, feel free to put them in chat. If anyone in our actual audience here has a question, by all means, raise your hand and you can ask your question. Um, but I am excited. Uh, today went off really well. It's the first time we offered classes on Thursday. Yeah. Um, we Half of the classes were uh, at a local school in town called Steve Damasco Shaolin Studio. Yep. Yep. Uh, they were very gracious enough Shout to, out to them. Come, come in and, and teach classes. Great, great in their facility. Space. They're one of the ones offering free. Um, and so we were there for the morning, and then the afternoon we moved to Elements MMA, which yep. is a uh, an MMA school here in town. Um, but Jeremy's anti-MMA. Well, no, you're anti no bad. You're, you're I'm, I'm anti ego BS. Yes. You're anti bad. I'm not going to say respect. it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the but the elements MMA is not your typical MMA school because they they embody the M, the M, and the A. It is a mixed martial arts school. They have they teach classes in Taekwondo. They teach classes in Muay Thai. They teach classes in BJJ. They teach classes in lots of different martial arts and mix them together. It's not a UFC school. Um, and so anyway, Ari, the uh, the owner of the school where Ab and Abby teaches her Taekwondo program there, he let us come in and, and teach our classes there today yep. uh, in the afternoon. Tomorrow, Matic Level 2 is going to be level happening two there. Over there. Um, and all of the other classes tomorrow are happening at Steve Damasco again. So both of those schools have opened their doors up to us two days in a row. Yeah, um, yeah really, which really is, appreciate it. It's just phenomenal. Things. And then on Saturday, we'll be at St. Joseph's yep. Regional School uh, on Wilson Street here in Keene. And then on Sunday, again, Sunday last year was just 
Matic, and that's yeah. it. And this year, Matic will be happening downstairs in the cafeteria, and we have classes happening on Sunday. If you want to check out the full complement of what's going on, marshallsummit.com now directs you to that specific page at whistlekick.com, so you don't even have to hunt for it. Marshallsummit.com and yeah. the schedule's there and everything. So uh, that page will live there and get updated and everything. So whether you're watching this now or into the future. Any questions from the audience? Amen. Amen. Bueller? I was going to say Bueller. Bueller? Bueller. Uh, Tommy Gibbon says you are anti BS. I am anti BS. That's basically what it is. Uh, Abby's still in the chat. Uh, it's great to have her. A couple other people that showed up uh, and chatted and said hi. Gage. Hey, Gage is here? Yeah, well, he was. I don't oh. know if he still is, but uh, Matt you know Brown, what? Matt Brown take, just take showed the, up. Take the opportunity. You want, yeah. you want to talk about the belt? All right. You can put it on the table. So I we're, have. We're we're probably going to talk more about this, but given that it's here, Gage yeah, yeah, is here. Yeah. I think I think we need to. Uh, yeah, I don't know if Gage is still here, but I have uh, I have in my hands here a new belt, uh, and it's uh, if you're watching, you can see that it's black and it says whistle kick, but it's also oh, wait. There's more. It's also white and says what's upside down. It's also white <laughs> and says whistle kick, uh, and so. Someone else, I think you're the one that said this to me. I don't know if someone else said it to you, but this is the biggest epitome of a yin yang belt that you could get. Yeah, that's that's um, yeah. because go ahead and you can tell them why because it's on, black on one side, white yeah. on the other. But the, on the inside of the black, so this is something Kataro does, it's really cool. And reminder, shout out Kataro, uh, WK10. I think that code still works. Um, if you, I, I don't know if other companies do this, but Kataro has a line of belts where when you can have them made this way because they're all custom made that when you wear through the outer layer there's an inner layer which most black belts when it wears down it becomes yeah. white anyway yeah, it's, right? kind, it's, it's kind of cool. an inner core that turns yeah. white right and i and because i like to do things differently and I, I went to victor and i said see if they can make this the black wears to white but the white wears to black because so. that's that's how i see training right yep. we, we as we get better we realize there's more to learn and as we learn more there's more to learn yeah yeah and we learn more when we acknowledge the fact that we don't know anything right yeah. so it's kind of this back and forth play and i mean that's that's what that symbolizes so to me. i love it for a, a handful of reasons one uh you know when, when i'm teaching in my school i can you have the black side out shows I'm a black belt, right? My students see that, whatever. If I go to your school, Jeremy, and I'm going to go for the day, or if I you know, go to, to Kelly's class to just to hang out for the day or Craig's or whatever, I can wear the white tie now. Mm -hmm. And it shows, you know, I'm here, I'm here to learn. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm open. I'm open to whatever it is you're going to teach. I'm not coming in with any preconceived notions. Um, the other thing, which is just kind of cool for people that, and you know i had i had my name embroidered on one side as well in case you forget who you are yeah i mean i always want to know my name uh, but most embroidered belts that you get it has embroidery on one side and then the other side when you flip it over it's like reverse it's backwards and you can't read it but on this belt it says it's the same it's reading your name on both, on sides. both sides uh and <laughs> the same thing for the whistle kick it's the exact opposite, but not reverse. Like you can still read it on both sides, and I and I think that's pretty cool because yeah. I never they, like they that. make they make awesome stuff. They really do. If you if, you know, regardless of code, regardless of that, just like just check out Guitaro. Yeah, their belts K A T A A R O. And thank you to Gage for you know taking my crazy idea and actually making it happen. Absolutely. So uh, I that was all that I had. Last call. Anybody in the audience have anything they want to say? Remember, we're live, so be cave. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i think that's it my friend great well i want to thank everybody for tuning in for watching for listening if you want to support the best thing to do is show up to an event and see what we're talking about but of course other things you can do you can support the patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash whistlekick share this or maybe not this this probably episode probably doesn't mean <laughs> much to people unless they have a relationship with Lizzo Kick, but share another episode. Tell people about the YouTube channel. Have people following along with the things that we're doing. Check out the books that we've got going on. If you have a bookstore, make sure you 
check out the books that we've got going there because you know what? It's, there's books. There's books everywhere. Books. You wouldn't believe the number of books. Yeah. And just recognize what we're trying to do and help us do it. If you want to help us, you want to talk to us, you got a question, something like that, Andrew at whistlekick.com, Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day. We do a great job of that one first. And...